Welcome back guys. We are hard at work grinding the new wilderness weapons from the revamped body bosses, especially the Void Waker, as it is the most useful weapon overall for me. Not to mention on the previous episode, I got a lucky Void Waker gem piece at Venonatus and the Vigorous Mace upgrade at Callisto, which is perfect because it is best in slot weapon or Venion, which gives one of the pieces. This progress episode is absolutely stacked with weeks of grinding and insane progress. So if you did enjoy this video, please give it a like and sub while ringing the bell for future testing of all these new weapons coming soon. Mm, easy kill. <gasps> oh, I got a giant pickaxe. <laughs> oh, you got a claw? Oh my god. Yeah, okay, bank, bank, bank. I'll help you out. So I continue working mostly on Callisto for the Void Waker Hilt next because I had some homies that I regularly do bossing with running Callisto so it was perfect to do it together. The team size was small which is ideal for grinding Callisto. Callisto is rough to solo, you take a lot of chip damage if you take too long to kill the beast so groups are usually the way to go. Otherwise you do the single version and I prefer not to. Yo, you know, I've never seen a, a, a tyrannical ring this whole time. Maybe like 800 kills, because then that's post Wildy. so... Oh, uh, you know, one of the cool things about the glory tech is that I can just keep recharging it here on the way. Oh, I already did it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my god! Void Waker Hill! Oh my god! I'll pay, I'll split, I'll split, I'll split. I'll give you guys the money. Oh my god, two out of three. I'm leaving. <laughs> right before uh, it's 30 minutes left until maintenance holy so we got decently lucky on the second piece of the void worker hilt things are looking pretty good for us right now now that we have the gem and the hilt it is time to get the void waker blade from vedion the last piece we need to make this void waker i honestly thought making the void waker would be a breeze at this point but very soon i realized i was dead wrong I like doing the multi version as you can go friends, but I also did the single version as well a bit when I thought the peers were way too active in the multi. I initially went to the total worlds for most of the kills and just did it with randoms, but as time went on, I gradually moved on to souls on non total worlds once I got more comfortable dealing with the PKers and the blade just kept eluding me in the groups as well. You will see. Uh, is there a guy? This guy trying to PK me? Oh. So annoying. Bro, get the frick out of here, mate. Yeah, the single spot is really... Oh, god dang. Wait, can this disappear? Oh, he can't even hit me. Can't even hit me. But it's always good to pray mage, though. There's like six people that just hopped into this world already. Holy. Yo, these solo bosses are really popular. Holy. Oh my god, come on, I almost had him. I should bring claws, honestly. So, I wasn't sure who attacked me at first until my viewers told me that it was actually uh, Oda Block. But luckily for me, he was PKing with the Rev weapons, not things like a Karasi Void Waker. So, I actually had a chance and I did manage to escape. But I figured he was probably just trying to make a PK video on these new weapons. That's right, mother trucker. Get out of here. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I did not do much damage there. The hits were not good. Oh my god, he got the Void Worker Blade. Holy shit, we finally saw it. Yo, Tekton got it. Wow, that's, the, that's what I needed, dude. That is what I needed. Holy. First one I've seen. Uh, 500... 400 multi Vedions. Now that I know it exists... It's time for me to get mine. So some of these early clips were before some of the bosses got some mechanical changes. So Vedion was actually really bad, of course, with too many people in terms of the lightning mechanic because it would spawn a stupid amount of lightning and it was really hard to dodge when there was like four plus people. But since then, they've capped it to like seven lightning or something, no matter how many people. So that's pretty nice. <laughs> So the great thing about the anti-skull mechanic is that if somebody attacked you previously, like you didn't hop or log out, 
then if the guy shows up again, you can actually instantly attack him again without getting sculled. And this is exactly what happened here. Oh, we killed him! <laughs> yeah, yeah, we killed him. So this update is an amazing time for me to practice some anti PKing, Especially because the skill level of the PKers themselves, they vary a ton. And of course... A lot of the times you are against multi, but I try my best to, you know, get the singles and try to get a decent 1v1 going. Of course, doesn't always work out, but with every death, I learned how to maximize my escapes and see whether or not it's worth running away or just going for the fight. So if you die during Vedion, it's extremely easy to get your looting bag back because the skeletal dogs, they pretty much almost 100% drop it every time you kill one. Sometimes PKers show up at the worst times of Vedion because if they show up when the dog spawns, they will actually attack the PKers too. So this guy had no chance. It was 3v1 against him. Only TB here, so the only way I can probably escape from this guy is to log out. Alright. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'll be ready, I guess. I got it! <laughs> okay. Oh, oh pfft, I got a giant pickaxe. <laughs> uh, I need to leave now. Oh, man. Yeah, but it's not the right thing that I need. Alright, this Saturday in particular has been pretty rough on the dying, even at late times. Probably die like four to five times today. But, uh, yeah, mainly it's just GP loss, you know, and whatnot, so it's okay. Oh, nice. 200 KC at the Calgarian, Calvarian boss. Only 100 more to go to reach the average. Oh my god, I got Ring of the Gods? Alright, well, uh, that's not the one I need, but, uh, <laughs> uh, yay, yay. I'll give some money to you guys if you want it, by the way. <laughs> Yo, was Ring of the Gods in Butte always 325k? Because that's quite cheap. Well, never thought I would have a dupe Ring of the Gods, but that's cool. Wow. What? Another blade? Holy shit. Oh my god! A skull! <laughs> Lol. Holy... Ah, uh, but that's, uh, not the blade, but yeah, I'll take it, I'll take it. Skull Vidion! Yay! Four out of six. Dang, I've actually gotten so many Restore 4 doses. <laughs> a surplus from this. Alright, Skull Vidion, Damron Scepter. So, this weapon has already been buffed on its own. So, the Damron Scepter now has the ability to autocast like a trident and also has another form that autocasts Ancients. And in both cases, on monsters in the wilderness, it does 50% extra damage and 50% more accuracy. Now we're going to charge this weapon. So charging it will give me a special attack now. Condemn. Fire a powerful spell with increased accuracy and damage on your target's magic and defense levels by up to 15%. So it's kind of like a Warhammer, except it lowers magic. So this Damron Scepter is definitely the most underrated of the three Wilderness weapons. It has so much potential in its special attack and of course its passive effect. How good is this weapon? Well, this video is not going to be covering the Scepter in depth. We'll have to do that on a separate prize video where I go experimenting and, you know, have at it. So I'll see you guys with a Damron Scepter video in the future. So make sure to sub so you don't miss out on that because I think it'll be a really interesting discovery. Oh shit, I forgot to mention, we are over a thousand KC of Vedia now. It doesn't really mean too much, I guess, because it's hard to tell, you know, which ones are solos, which ones are like duos. It's, yeah, nothing crazy, but cool. Dragon Two-Handed Sword. Okay, first time getting that. Huh. Uh. I don't even care, bro. Lamel, <laughs> Lamel. <laughs> Q. 
kill you. You're so freaking close. Dare you. <laughs> Lucky you. I didn't have claws. We protected the champion scroll. Let me see. Oh no, never mind. I've already got one of these. Oh my god, that's even worse. Oh shit, 1400 Venom KC. I'm climbing up these wilderness high scores. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm climbing up. I'm gonna take everyone's rank. Well, at least a Vidion at this point. <laughs> oh my god, this guy. Yo. <laughs> Just keeping left click on is worth it, I guess, because it really does make this grind so much more fun and less frustrating anti PKing. The only downside is when I path like to fight the boss with other players, it's kind of annoying, but it's not too bad. I kind of know how to path now, so I don't misclick on the minions and the boss. In the case of a single PK or small team PK in the multi version of the bosses, you can actually bait the PK and pretend that you're going to escape the boss room because once you escape, you can't come back inside. But I just run towards the door, but not actually go inside, so then they fall for the bait. Uh, he's, he went out by himself. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, so you see this range pot here? I like to actually keep it with me. Just because it's good for NTPKing and I don't have to bring my own range pot. Wow, that actually hit me. That's actually BS. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Oh, oh my god, what the f- Oh, what? Uh, oh my god, I got my first pet. Uh, okay. Alright, looks like the tease is real, guys. <laughs> Holy shit, what the hell? The tease is real. So, we've gotten two pets now in over a year. First one was Muspa, and now we have our first ever wilderness pets. That makes a total of 29 pets. Yes, no Chaos Ellie in my bank, but uh, that's kind of free, so whatever. But yeah, it's cool. Venion as our first Wildy Pet is super nice. Shit, someone just got the blade? No way! No! Bro, he got it again? No f***ing way, dude. <laughs> no way, dude. This is a crazier story than I've ever seen, dude. He lost the blade, and in 30 minutes, he got it again. Yeah, I, I think... Oh, I'm sorry, Mary. I am sorry. I'll give you the money. I'll give you the split. <laughs> I'll give you the split. Don't, don't look at it. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Wait, what do you get? Oh, you got the freaking blade. No way. Oh, Hodge got the blade. Rest in peace. I mean, grass to him. Well, right now this world is decently open. Oh my god. I have to already, like, bank 20 cent few serums. What the hell? Curved bone? Oh my god. Okay. Well. <laughs> I've got a long bone of curved bone so far from Vedion. Like, my character just went, like, full stupid mode. Oh my god, a giant pickaxe. Uh, okay. No, I don't need a giant pickaxe. It's time for our P-Care Index section where we explore the different species of PKers that roam the wilderness. Our subgroup focus today is the PVM hunters. Rather than fighting their own kind, they prefer to target defenseless prey, or so they often think. Our first set of PKers are the piranhas or the ants. These guys are only interested in fighting in big groups. When one of them is lured to singles, they refuse to attack the prey unless they can drag their prey to multi. An easy solution is simply to log out and they will be hungry as a result. The next set is called the Master Baiters. These guys pretend to be PVMers just coming by to check the worlds, but they're a clever bunch and will find a good time to sneak in their surprise attack on their unsuspected prey. However, they usually don't blend in too well as they oftentimes are scold or wear a piece of gear that is obviously a PK's preferred choice. Yeah, see, this is why you wear D high, boys. That guy tried to try to TB me. You missed every single one. We also have the stalkers. These guys will survey the area to see if there is prey nearby, and will wait for the prey to exit the caves to unleash a barrage of attacks on their target. 
Their success rate is fairly high, but some black dehydes can still foil their patient planning. Finally, there's the rush hour. One guy with ancients and the other guy with teleblock. A very deadly combo, as many have fallen prey to these magnificent duos. However, if you manage to reach singles, their success rate drastically drops. Sometimes they will let their partner PJ you for a teleblock. But if you're quick, you can get a free log out. Oh, I'm just gonna log out. <laughs> Idiot trying to TV me, forehead. I like the DFS though, I guess. It's not much different from a defender. I get the same max hit, and I can bring a spec weapon with me too. Oh, you are s Oh my god, you are so lucky, dude. Don't even bother. I've gotten so many. How many Sanfus do I have? Holy shit. <laughs> god, the one place to go drive for the blade and it's Vedion. Look at my freaking Sanfu stack. Holy shit. Oh shit, when did I get this 2000? Damn. Let me see how many solos I've done today. Holy shit, over 100 solos. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna keep doing solos. After being at Vedion for so long, I found really good ways to survive PKers, even if I am by myself in solo in a non-total world. I also put myself in a really good situation where even if they end up catching me, a lot of the times I'm just in singles, so then it's just one-on-one, -on -one, which means I have a much better control. All right, I think I might have gone a thousand Sanfus now. Yep, yep, there it is, a thousand Sanfus. I think I had like 200 or something before the Venian grind. Damn, today is a crazy day. Solo-wise, we did 160 or so. Some of it, some random people joined in, uh, but whatever. But yeah, about at least 160, so six hours. We averaged uh, close to 26 kills an hour. Wow, that's really good. It would be the equivalent of me killing 75 an hour in the three mans, but... We don't actually get anywhere near that in a three-man, so yeah. What I'm doing is by far the fastest way to get the drop. I mean, look at it. In one day, I've done half the drop rate of the blade, basically, or close to it. I dare him to come out, though. <laughs> you know, I want him to come out. Oh, he is so close. Yeah, welcome, boys. I'm just trying to get this blade from Vedion. <gasps> oh, it's not the right one. Oh, thanks for the raid, guys. Uh, I wish I had a spec, though. I'm going to wait a little bit. Dude. Oh, my God. Yo. <laughs> ah, scrub. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's named CCTV01. Oh my god. <sighs> Someone asked me earlier, they're like, yo, you use a CCTV? And I was like, wait, what do you mean? Like, why would I have a camera? He was talking about like an alt to check outside, but yeah, who needs that? You know, we just run fast. Yeah, that's how we do it. <laughs> Shit. A sharp blade looks to be the deadliest part of the powerful weapon press in the first enclave would know what it is. Okay, I'm sure it's this guy. I have these parts of a weapon. Do you think you can assemble it for me? Yes, these are parts of a particularly powerful weapon indeed. I can reassemble it for a fee. 100 k no less. Yes! Madam Sakaro takes the component off you and in the flash of white light fuses them together from the Void Waker. This weapon is now in our hands the void waker with an insane special attack so the special is called disrupt summons a powerful bolt of lightning that deals guaranteed magic damage based on your max hit the hits that you deal with this special will be at least a minimum of 50 percent of the current max hit that application is quite amazing for quite a few bosses where they're usually really tanky and you just can't really bypass this defense even dragon claws might have trouble so things like nightmare so it's gonna be amazing this thing will definitely devastate a lot of different bosses i can't wait to show you guys but particularly at nightmare though it's gonna be an amazing upgrade and it will definitely fuel my grind to finish the rest of the drops there it's gonna save me quite a bit of time for sure and it'll be really fun 
There we go, let's. 53. 46. Wow, that's actually insane. Actually, first impression. Yep, like I said, average hit is gonna be like a 50. So, here we go again. Oh my god. This spec is so insanely accurate. What the hell? I mean, it is 100% accurate. It is accuracy. Okay, perfect. I can redemption. Fourteen HP. Nice. Damn, Void Worker is so good for this last phase. If you have like two specs left, you're probably looking at a three shot, really. Also, one cool thing I gotta show you guys. This is now green locked. Look at that. Green freaking locked, man. Wow. One of the cool things of going dry was this pet though. So definitely we managed to get some nice consolation too as well. But wow, man. All right. As far as I remember, I started the wilderness new update with around 1300 revenant bracelets. Of course, Vedion, I basically went three times dry uh, based on the souls I did, the 400 calvarians I did, and the many three mans that I did as well. So it overall ended up around being three times dry. So 120 bracelet is worth around 30,000 ether. And I definitely lost a good amount of those due to dying to peak hairs. And I think a lot of how much you'll use to finish the Void Waker will definitely vary a lot. It depends on how often you die. As I got better at Vedion, like the last two days, I only died once in 300 solo Vedions. That's how like good I got from being there for so long. So let's talk about the Verion Adventure in terms of the overall drops. So the biggest drop, of course, is the Blade. It's probably like uh, worth at least half of the total price in reality. But this price check is actually wrong because the Blade says like 30 mil, but it's probably at least like 70 mil or something like that. So yeah, it's actually worth way more than what the Loot Tracker says. And other than that, though, the 700 Sanfri Serums is massive. Absolutely massive. So I ended up getting a lot more noticeably when I started doing the solos. So, yeah, when you hit those solos up, if you can't hit up those solos, the resource amounts are significantly higher for, like, time that you spend there. And uh, other uniques, two Ring of the Gods. I guess that's pretty average. Two Dragon Pickaxe, probably pretty average, slightly. And two Skulls. So those are all like within the rates, I suppose. So the only lucky thing that happened to me at Venion was definitely the pet. Because I'm sure I'm still not even on rate for the pet yet. In terms of other resources though, the highlight for me is definitely the Mortmai Fungus. Because I normally have to pick those up for stamina and all that. But I don't have to for a long time. 8k is a ton. Also, we got some Wines of Zami, a good amount, 3k. 22k Gold Ores. A good amount of runes, 50k chaos runes, 36k deaths, 22k bloods, some super compost, a decent amount of herbs. Also, it drops a lot of super combats and range spots too, so if you end up doing this boss and you don't have 90 herbler, hey, you get a good amount of combat pots <laughs> for special occasions until you get 90 herb. And the dragon bones are pretty nice too for prayer. The oak planks are pretty nice too for construction. And we got some gems too for crafting. But yeah, overall 180 mil minimum in loot, probably over 200 mil because of the blade. And I'm supposed to have like multiple blades, at least like two to three. So yeah, this is a lot less money than what I was supposed to make. But still a lot of money though. And that's a wrap for today. Venion is done. Void Waker is done. Wilderness is still not quite done yet. Outside of collection log, I still need the crossbow upgrade from venonatus so we'll slowly get there but i'm gonna definitely take it easy now because i spent way too much time in the wildy but yeah thank you guys so much for watching new videos coming very soon we're gonna show how to use the void waker we'll figure that out and things like the Amaran scepter as well i'm excited to show you guys those as well so i'll catch you guys soon thanks for watching see you guys later